how's it going? It's Jim, and I'm going to go through the results of my testing on the GoTrax GXL version 2, which is sitting right here. I almost forget which, <laughs> forgot what side was break as I was approaching the camera. That was almost bad. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to cover the results of my testing and give you an idea how it performs. And now that I spent a little more time with it, maybe get a little more insight into my initial impressions of the scooter. So, uh, my initial review, I did specs and what have you, and that's this. I'll repeat that in the description here, which a little summary with a little summary of the test, and you know, hopefully it helps you make a decision if this budget scooter is one for you. And again, I bought this off of Amazon, just myself for 299 US dollars. Uh, no anything at all uh, from GoTrax. So. I'm going to let some of the clips of the range test here. I'm going to do range testing first. I'm going to let the clips of the range test run and uh, talk while you're seeing some of the excerpts with the speed and distance and stuff. Both, both the range tests, range tests were done in a gear two. Gear one, in my for me, is only going five or six miles per hour, um, and that's just not. I I'd like to go faster than that. So anyway, range test number one. Uh, I got a total distance of 7.9 miles, and that's on my GPS, of course, because this display does not have distance. Uh, average speed was 10.6 miles per hour. There was 2 to 4 miles per hour wind uh, from the west, which would have been slightly against. Um, the motor temperature at the end of this test was 107 degrees, and the battery temperature 87, measuring in the stem. Uh, it was 72 to 82 degrees outside. And I stopped this test with one bar remaining a battery. Uh, and it, I don't know if I just said this, but again, 7.9 miles. And I think one bar of battery remaining is the way to go with this scooter. You really want to maintain between 20 and 80% of battery, and this has four bars. So that one bar should be about 25%. So that's probably where I would err on. Um, anyway, it took four hours to recharge the scooter, and it used 0.18 kilowatt hours of power. Range test number two. Uh, I wanted to do this range test of exhausting the battery totally, um, and I got a total of 10.6 miles with an average speed about 10 miles per hour. And that average speed's kind of a misnomer because uh, most of my routes I have to do some stopping. I, there was five to six miles per hour from the west, so at this on this test that was actually a tailwind. Uh, at the end of the test, the battery, the motor was 130.5 degrees and the battery measured in the stem was 110 degrees and that concerns me but that's the highest battery temperature i've measured but i don't know how much is affected by it being in the in the down tube slash stem here uh, it was really hot outside it was between 102 and 99 degrees at the end of this test like i said i took it down to no battery remaining it took four and a half hours to recharge it using 0.23 kilowatt hours of power uh, one note is the battery charger does seem to get really hot, hot to the touch, and it looks like it could be using slightly more power than it's bringing in, which uh, more so than most of the other charges I've seen. And then just a note about the range, like I, I was, so a note about the range, you really want to maintain the battery between 20 and 80 percent. So for me at 175 pounds, I would say the range is a maximum of eight miles. Knowing that you have a couple miles there, if you really need it and didn't bring your charger and just need a couple extra miles to get home or whatever. So next, let's talk about the acceleration. So on to my acceleration testing. I always do four tests to 100 feet and average those to get a good solid acceleration number for comparison. At 175 pounds, I got 7.4 seconds, and my lady friend at 115 got 6.8. And uh, comparing this to other scooters, only the Zoom Strider was slower to 100 feet of the scooters I've tested so far, and I'll list them up on the screen here. Um, but it does feel slower, and I'm going to do a little video clip about riding of these scooters and flip-flopping to show you the comparison between the this GoTrax and the Zoom Strider. Note that that is a 33-volt version of the Zoom Strider, just so you can kind of see. Um, I think they're going to be pretty equal, even though I it's really hard to explain, but the, the, the GoTrax feels slower.
thinking about my braking. So I did, one thing about this scooter is the braking is quite good. Um, so you just have the mechanical rear disc brake and it does engage electronic brake, uh, but that electronic brake doesn't seem to be all that powerful. And actually, I'm gonna just demonstrate that right now. At first I was thinking there was no electronic brake, but then my son showed me this, see if I can hold this here. So if I just spin the wheel and let it slow down, it, you know, it slows down sort of slowly. Now if I do that same spin and hit the brake, I hope you can see that. Um, so there's a degree of electronic braking in there, but it's not significant. It doesn't seem to, I don't really feel it with my weight. I don't feel it when I'm riding. Um, but anyway, the, the thing I really notice is with having a mostly mechanical braking system is my braking tests are very consistent. So usually I would do four, but in this case I only had to do two because each time we stopped, we stopped really quickly. So I stopped in a, and like almost the same distance. So I, my uh, stopping distance was 15.6 feet, um, and that's from the max speed, which um, we'll get into in a second. <laughs> but, uh, and then my lady friend at 115 pounds, she stopped on just over 18 feet. So still quite good, leaves a nice skid mark. I'll probably leave the audio for the skid mark from my lady friend, uh, she made it, she was pretty proud of it. Look at the skid mark I just made, people. The line I left on the pavement. Oh, um, but it, it's, I like how it's dependable and like with the, a lot of the electronic braking systems, um, it's not as reliable in an emergency situation. Like you don't, it, it isn't always the same. And the mechanical brake seems to be quite, quite the same. So now we're gonna move on in a little lighting. I'm just, I'm just gonna show a little bit of clip on the lighting. So this only has a front headlight, of course, with just reflectors in the back. It does an adequate job being as a visibility thing for other, you know, other things on the road. I, I don't really think the beam pattern doesn't seem to be quite high and it's not really hitting the ground. So I don't think it'd be much of a benefit as far as uh, seeing when you were when you were riding, really. So I just want to talk about acceleration. So Ernesto Noriega, hopefully I got the name right and remembered it correctly, uh, said that um, at higher tire pressures, he got a higher top speed. And that, that that's my biggest complaint with the scooter is not necessarily that it uh, is advertised at 15 and a half miles per hour. And me, I'm getting, I'm getting that display on the screen here, but my GPS and the feel, it's going much slower. I'm getting somewhere between 12 and 13 miles per hour sets. At that speed, that's, that's in the order of 20% off as far as optimism. So I contacted GoTrax with the intent of actually returning this because I felt it, re um, it was performing so poorly compared to what it's advertised as. And that's kind of why I was a little bit harsh on this scooter in my initial review. Uh, just because it wasn't, and then GoTrax response was just like, well, if the display says it, that's true. We don't support any other verification of speed. So if I would have returned it, they would have charged me the 30% uh, restocking fee. And of course it says the correct speed, but that's not actually what it's doing. So I think if this was actually going 15 to, to 18 miles per hour, as some people have said they're able to do, I'd have a lot better opinion of it because the ride is quite good, the braking is good, and it's cheap. I mean, you can't expect a ton, but with me, the speed is low enough that I would really look at other options because I, I just don't feel like that's fast enough for my commute. And if I'm going longer distance a lot of times on my commute, if I was only going a mile, maybe so, it'd be okay. And the fact for me that the stem doesn't collapse and the handle grips don't go down makes it the form factor when it's folded is too large for me also. I like it to be smaller, easier to put under my desk and that kind of thing. But if you're not really folding it up, you don't care about ripping around at you know 15 miles per hour plus, it's cheap, it doesn't make a lot of noise, and it's pretty, uh, pretty solid. So what I'm going to do now is um, Ernesto Noriega, like I was alluding to, he, he said, uh, running at higher PSI, like 50 PSI, helped this top speed. So I pumped up both these tires at 50 PSI 
Um, they were about 40 prior to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the camera off of there and put it on my, put it on with the show the GPS. Boom, GPS. Near, 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 near. And then I'm going to hold my other camera at the display. Um, so you're able to kind of see, and I'll just put that little picture. And so you'll be able to kind of look as a comparison. Getting up to 16.1. Increasing the air pressure doesn't seem, I'm not seeing a difference in speed on the display. Um, we'll see if the GPS says something differently. Rip it up! About time! I hope this really, this uh, detailed look at the testing helps you out. And you know, feel free to comment as, you know, I, I really appreciate the comments people are leaving. I think it just helps everybody um, make these buying decisions and kind of knowing what you're getting. So, as always, thanks for watching and I'm gonna I'm going to show the torrid acceleration on this thing. One thing I don't know if I noted before, it always starts in speed mode 1, so you have to hold it and move it in speed mode 2. But, alright, this is going to be full bore. Oh, one other thing I wanted, I always do one other thing, I'm like freaking Columbo. Alright, so, this is all, um, there's no zero start, so you always have to kick to start. The one thing I've noticed on the Zero, Zoom Strider and some of the other scooters with kick to start, I like it because I will hold the throttle and then I'll kick. And that seems to me like to be the fastest take, way to take off. The thing that um, I'll show here with the GoTrax is you can't do that. So you hold the throttle and you kick. And it doesn't engage. Um, I don't know if that's a safety feature. It could be. Um, I know they, it, the the kick start usually kicks in at a mile or two per hour. I'm not exactly sure because this display isn't accurate. Um, but what you have to do on this one, you have to kick then hit the throttle. That's the only way you can get that throttle to, to work. If you have it held down, it doesn't it doesn't work. Just a thing to note. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you soon. See ya. See, I haven't did it again trying not to do it. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps you out. Leave a comment. Appreciate it. Catch the wave.